All right, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Business Blast podcast. I'm your host, Tyler Wagner. Today, I have Sarah Kirikoni with us. She is an author, speaker, coach, and content creator. So welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Tyler. What a, that's quite an intro and absolutely perfect. So Yes, <laughs> we got it. We got the last name on point. <laughs> Let's celebrate real quick for that. <laughs> we had some jokes before for listeners about the spelling of last names. And it's funny. I mean, not to, to, not to start it off already, but it's really it's funny how kids can be when you're younger. Because I was making the joke how they called me macaroni. And it's like... Yeah. Now I use it as a reference. So it's like, now what? (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, macaroni. I feel like for elementary, that's like fair. But middle school, high school, you got to start to be a little more clever. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So so the first one we ask on, on this show is, what's the best story from your life that has an underlying valuable message? Oh, we go deep Picking fast. one, yeah, but it's like, it's really, I think life has so many lessons and stories that really can tip and turn and when you're open to it, can really teach you something. So it's, my wow is in relation to picking one. Um, I'll go for the pivotal part that uh, changed from part one in my book to part two. So between mm-hmm. the the fall and the rise, it was after going through cancer. So I'm a 15 year cancer survivor of Hodgkin's lymphoma. And after going through cancer, it was this post-traumatic rebirth. What do I do now? I need to fix my shit and, you know, get on with life and do something awesome. And it was this long plateau of still stumbling along the way, which I'm sure we'll get into more detail later about the details of what I've been through and uh, the bumps and rocks. But a part of it really was what I started to uh, wanting to heal that, that desire to want to live better. And I think that was the biggest turning point after cancer, when I was still struggling with alcohol, when I was still struggling with an eating disorder. And I had this, this wake up call uh, when I was dating my ex-husband at the time, like I want to create something better for myself. And I made that mental choice to really dedicate to wanting to do it. So it, mm-hmm. I think that that was the biggest part. It wasn't necessarily the event itself of cancer, of the eating disorder, of the alcohol addiction. It was all of those combined in that long plateau of my life can either continue on like this or we can make a change. We can stop this pattern and I can do something different. So, so yeah, to dive deeper in some of those things. So like the, the type of cancer, I'm actually not familiar with it. So like what what are like the, I guess, side effects of that type? Or what does that type mean that you mentioned? I will, so it's, it's Hodgkin's lymphoma. There's okay. two different, uh, well, three. There's leukemia, there's Hodgkin's lymphoma, and non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Oh, okay. And yeah. they're all cancers of the blood. So that's mm. probably the easiest way to relate to it is they're all cancers related to the blood. And the okay. lymphatic system is designed to clean any toxins out of your body. When they yeah. don't clean them, they get stuck within you. So oh, okay. I, it was a combination of things that potentially, we all have cancer cells within us, uh, mm. some more by genetics, but as humans, our cells can mutate if they're not properly cared for. And if it's really the perfect storm of elements that creates the cancer tumor to begin to grow and metastasize. So the Hodgkin's, I think that answers the first part of what Hodgkin's is. Uh, And uh, so it was, I was 19. I was 19 years old when I was diagnosed. But what some of the, I will say, you asked what some of the side effects that I started to notice, I had this big lump in my neck that just got bigger and bigger and bigger. It started out Uh, as we called it the bean. And it was like this little, it's a, it's a nodule. Of, of your lymph nodes and it was moving and it started to grow and it mm. started as a kind of a joke where we called this little thing in my neck the bean yeah. and it grew into a cancer that was almost the size of a golf ball so it wow. got really big until one day my mom's telling me you are going to the doctor i was a, in the pd section still at the time and she's like go get this checked out so that's really the first telltale sign of there's something not right here. Yeah. 
Got it. Okay. So that being it like a physical, like growth thing, that, that kind of was obvious. That stands there. out. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Um, and then as far as like the, like alcoholism and like eating disorder. So you literally, you're going through cancer and at the same time you're going through those two things or was that? Yeah. Uh, alcoholism came, I, I struggled with alcohol, like having a healthy relationship with alcohol, even in high school. Uh, this is one of those do as I say, uh, don't do as I do to any kids who are listening at home. But it's, it's when I was gotcha. in high school, I started to experiment and drink. I mean, I think that's what we do as high school. We want to try different totally. things and especially push boundaries that we're told, no, you can't do. I'm a person where if you tell me no, it's like, you know, you just reverse psychology. Me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> try me. <laughs> Game yeah. on. But, um. It was really experimentation in high school with alcohol, but then when I went off to college the first time around, that I got heavily into using almost on a, I would say four or five out of seven days a week of drinking. Um, yeah. At the same time, all from 14 on, I began my struggle with food and body image mm -hmm. and self-confidence and esteem. So that's where the eating disorder started at a much earlier age, but the alcoholism itself yeah. wasn't until I was about 18. And then again, right. when I was 21, 22, 23. And you've like gotten through like all, all of these things at, at this point. Doing a two thumbs up and yeah, for me, it's, it's not cutting things out completely, but developing a better yeah. relationship with them. And that's a Got big it. reason that I'm able to speak about it today, that I'm able to share. I think when we overcome things in ways or develop better relationships with them, that we're able to speak about them because we've made peace. So it's, at the time, I was never ready going through it to talk to anybody. Now I want to talk to everybody about it. For sure, yeah, and I, I can relate. I think a lot of people, like you said, Ken, like high school, I was definitely drinking way too much college same thing it was probably four or five times a week because in college the weekend starts on thursday yes. you know and then during the week there's usually like deals to like get you to come on so it's like wednesday it was like dollar drinks because like there's no reason to go out on a wednesday except for the fact that the drinks are like 90 percent off so it's like <laughs> i mean you're a girl there's something when you're a girl that they're like just come just come <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah yeah well yeah <laughs> Typically, they, they might be free. I, oh, yeah. I think it's some, some bars, there was like girls night. Yes. Um, and like that would actually be like free drinks. Um, and there was like the frat parties. So either way, I mean, four or five nights a week, I'm fairly positive I was drinking that much as well. Um, and, and for me, what started to happen, I, it was just like too much of a fog. Like mm -hmm. I, I eventually, like I dropped out of school, started a company and it got to a point for me where I was like, okay, I either have to choose the company or the drinking because I, it's affecting me days after the fact. And that's, so I had a great night, <laughs> but like the next day was awful. So um, just like you, I, I, I don't, I haven't like removed it fully, but I have a better relationship with it where it's like, I can just have two drinks and be okay. Like I don't need 12 or whatever. Sure. I was and I think that's, yeah, there's a couple key points that you mentioned in there. One being that alcohol is socially acceptable. Like mm -hmm. having an eating disorder is, you know, it's not like, yeah, way to go. Mm. Throwing up and starving yourself today. But it's, it's, which I did. And that's why I'm not making light of it at all. But it's, it's not mm. socially acceptable in the way that drinking is encouraged. And Definitely. I think to some, to some extent, it's also overeating can be socially acceptable. Um, the part that really with alcohol that started to hit me, it was like severe guilt and it was really mm. the waking up and the need to, I, there was often times where I would wake up and just keep drinking because it was easier than dealing with the hangover. Same. And it's, it's like the fog that you're saying for me, yeah. it was really not remembering certain things. Like I, fortunately and thankfully, you know, angels above but i never got into any serious trouble predicaments injuries nothing it's it's a blessing and i'm really thankful for it um yeah but it it really became more of a dependency to cope with the emotions that i was shutting down 
Mm. which is the same thing that other addictions do just like an eating disorder. It's swapping one for the other, really. Totally. Yeah. Um, no, I, I can relate. Um, so my next one for you is, uh, what is the most valuable piece of information that we should know that's within your expertise or industry? I mean, for, for a line of encouragement, is that what you're looking for? Um, well, yeah, so I guess even, or it, you could go to maybe the route of like writing, writing your book. Do you have like any like tips for that? A lot of people want to write books and it's, it's very difficult for a lot of people. So maybe that direction or in like your practice, uh, something in those lines. I mean, I can answer both. So I think really okay. it's that anybody can choose to make a life for themselves, what they want. They can, there's always two choices in any situation. And mm. I think the, I'm really about empowering people to make those choices, to see that you have options, educate yourself on them, but then make the choice that you're content and you're happy with. And even in the end, if it doesn't turn out the way you want it, to remove those expectations mm. and still know that you made that choice. So it's really a lot of personal responsibility and, uh, I know you did an interview with Gary Vee as well. And it's, it's a lot. I was actually just watching a video on him about it. And it's when you are responsible for everything that you, you yes. take responsibility and you, you don't blame anybody else for any of your shit, then you, you empower yourself to really take that freedom. And I'm all about live free freedom and freedom is comes with a giant responsibility, but mm. it's also what frees us. So the, the one liner would be really to know that you always have in any situation, at least two choices and you have the power to make that choice. It may not yeah. be choices that are ideal, but we have choices always. Um, that's a big part of what the book is. And yeah. as far as writing a book, I mean, I come from a design background. So I was a professional graphic designer, art director, and even to this day, I'm still, I'm a creative director. So I'm, I'm always directing all of my shoots and uh, all the content creation that I do. Yeah. And it's really to start with, start with a core, start with an idea and start to create outlines for where you want. You have to know your, uh, your beginning, like where you're starting, but you really need to know more of the ending, where you want to be, where you want to mm. take the reader or what story you want to tell. I think that also applies in life to make a double application. If you don't know where the heck you want to go in life, the rest of the story and the chapters are going to be a little, maybe not misguided, but they're not going to have a clear focus. And you certainly oh. won't get to the ending in the same way that you were hoping for. But to have an idea of what ending and where you wanna take the reader, the audience, or your life, then I think that's the most important place to start. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that. And I, um, I think what, so Gary, I know exactly what you're talking about. I think what he says, he's like, you know why I'm so happy? It's because I think everything's my fault. Yes. And that, yeah, that's one of the things he says. And I remember like hearing that, that, that actually was pretty pivotal for me. Like, cause when you, when you really boil that down, like everything and another, like, I think we're both maybe equally Gary Vee fans. So, cause I, I watch him like every day yeah. and it's, it's the other thing is that like giving without expectations. Cause I think like, I don't mean to like blame schools and everything, but I, I think we're kind of brought up in a way of like uh, transactional. So it's like, if I do this amount of work, I deserve this pay or something like that. Mm -hmm. But in the way of like the entrepreneurial world and the way I've seen Gary just kind of blow up and even with myself, the more that you just like give without any sort of like transactional mindset, it comes back like tenfold, it, but it just takes time, you know? And I think like, if you can kind of remove that transactional mindset and get into the mindset of just like, giving and you, you need to take care of yourself for sure. I'm not saying you don't do that, but if you just keep giving, it is kind of funny, I guess, how it just comes back. It just does. I agree. Um, so yeah, just watching Gary with how much he just over delivers all the time and it really does, it comes back. So I just kind of follow that model. It's, um, um, it's definitely, and this is where I'll, I'll need to send you a copy of the book, but it's, there's the second part of the manifesto and I, in the live free manifesto and I talk about that and it's mm. act without, um, act without expectation. So yeah. you're just, you're acting and you're not expecting something in return. You're, 
I'm sharing a post on Instagram and no matter how many likes or com I'm sharing it because at least I know it's connecting to one reader yep. out there who was asking that question or needed to hear the message. So it's yeah. not the expectation of something, but it's acting because of pure will. And mm. I think that's, a, that's exactly what you're saying. So it's the same yeah. mindset, same everything. Yeah. And that changes. And what's interesting is that actually changed the, changes the literal action that you take. Cause if you act with an expectation, your actual action will be potentially inauthentic. Like it won't be actually like, so either way, that's a wrap. We can, we can go deep on that. <laughs> um, so, um, so my next one, and, and maybe we kind of covered some of it is what's your best piece of just overall business advice. So not necessarily like industry specific, um, but just business in general. Like what would you, what would you say? Uh, without sounding too cliche, it's really to, I mean, it's, it, I actually just posted on this. This is where I'll use, I'm using some of the wording. So never settle is one of the manifestos as well. And it's, if you know, you can do better, don't cut yourself short. Don't limit yourself. If you really truly believe in what you're, you're doing, your passion, then know whose voice is pushing on top of what your actions are. And it's mm -hmm. to always do your best, no matter what, do your absolute best. Um, this will go back into one of the Instagram stories that I posted two days ago. And I had a lot of great feedback on it because it was honest. I, I said, you know, I'm really, I'm doing this work. I'm doing this video for a client and I feel like I'm getting underpaid for it, but I'm mm. still, I'm not going to half-ass it. I'm going to give it my all, my best, because I truly believe one thing is going to lead to another, can lead yeah. to another. And in design and creative, I mean, there's portfolio pieces, but I always think too, is there's always somebody looking, you know, without us knowing. And even if someone isn't looking, to just do your best for your own peace of mind that you did your all and that's all you can ask for it. Yeah. Your own peace of mind. And I think too, like whenever anybody's getting started with like a new business, like a new entrepreneur, I always like tell them my story of like how I just did it for free at first, like in exchange for a testimonial. That's all I asked for. So like I did a book, it did well. And then I started helping other people with it for free. But no, no money exchange. I was just like, just tell me, give me a video testimonial of your experience. If it was good, don't do it. If it was bad. <laughs> 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 and, uh, and then from that though, I did that with like 10, 15 people. And then what starts to happen is referrals. So like word of, in my opinion, word of mouth marketing is the best marketing. So it's okay. Facebook ads are great and all these tools are fantastic. But like you're saying, even though you might feel like you're being underpaid, you doing a really good job and like over delivering for this person could really lead to three or four more clients a lot easier than a Facebook ads and a sales funnel. Like just do the right thing, do the yeah. good work and it will, they'll tell other people. So I don't know. To me, that's always been common sense, but um, for a lot, I think it might not be. So, I think we're also supposed to eat our fruits and vegetables and we don't always yeah, eat. True. We know things that are common sense it doesn't mean we do them true, very true. <laughs> um so so the next one is if you could give your younger self one piece of advice what would that be oh uh be to, to learn to love myself to take it easy on sarah i'm really my hardest critic and it's been something since I was young. My parents always said that to me. And they're like, you're, you're doing great. Like, really take it easy on yourself. When I did sports, when I did school, it was always this high achieving, perfectionistic, I mean, all the typical qualities of developing anorexia and an eating disorder was really to take it easier on myself, to be kind to Sarah, to know that it's okay to be weird, to not fit in. And that all kind of falls underneath the same self-confidence, self-esteem umbrella yeah. that I really struggled with at a young age. Sarah needed like a little hug in yeah. a lot of ways with a little pat on the head. And it was just like, <laughs> it's okay, you're weird and you're gonna be weird for the whole rest of your life. And that's really pretty damn cool. You're gonna yeah. excel in life because you're weird. <laughs> yeah. No, I agree. I think when you can like start to embrace it, because that's the hardest part too, is like when you get put into school and like society, when you, when you are weird, um, 
then it's, it's almost looked down upon. But what's interesting is that it tends to be a, a trait and weird may not be like the best word. Like, I don't know how to word it, but it tends to be a good trait for success though. Like if you can stand out later in life, um, it tends to work well. Whereas in school, they're like, no, stay in line. Like learn calculus. <laughs> it's like, I hate calculus. <laughs> I don't want to learn um, that. See, I loved it. That and physics. <laughs> Oh man, no I'm way. Weird. I, I told you I'm weird. I okay. also don't like chocolate. <laughs> weird. I know. No, is, <laughs> no, but like, no, that's awesome. But see, for somebody like me who just, I, I love human interaction and I hated like calculus. So like, all I'm saying is it wouldn't be best for me to then like listen to that and, and, and like go all in on calculus. Like I think what's better is double down on your strengths. So if you love calculus, like maybe that would have been a potential great thing for you, you know? The um, art thing worked out oh, pretty damn we well, the, the talent and... Uh, yeah. <laughs> but life uh, has been the lessons. But I think I, the, the yeah. idea of school and how the school system works and learning is a complete conversation for another day that I totally. really can go off on a whole limb for. But I know, I know. That's, the, that's, <laughs> that's a, a whole different topic. That's a the, deep rabbit hole. I'm with you. Um, there's a section of my book called own your weird and it's a hashtag yeah. that I use often and it's something that I share with a lot of younger kids who are messaging out to me and I say kids like yeah. 16 17 18 and it's about owning your weird because there is this part and that's why I use the word weird because it's literally in my Got book it. hashtag own your weird and totally. it's learning to be okay with yourself and who you are and that that's really okay that's going to be your strength later on in life there's yeah. a joke and I'm trying to think of it. And it says that kid that you're teasing about being the nerd in school, you better yeah. shut the F up because he's going to be your boss someday. <laughs> yes, I know exactly the quote you're talking about. And it's true. It's yeah. actually, that's like real stuff right there. He's going to be yeah. giving your promotion or your pig slip. Yeah. So shut up. <laughs> <laughs> so I think you kind of said it like, like owning, owning your weird, I think could be part of this answer. So the next one though is in your opinion, what's the key to happiness? And I would say owning your weird is part of it. Um, but what? Certainly. Yeah, what Certain, that's part of it because I think it all ties under self-acceptance, self-awareness. I think mm. self-awareness is the biggest, biggest key to happiness because when you are self-aware of what you like, what you don't like, what your values are, what you can tolerate, what you absolutely cannot tolerate, mm. then you start to filter out decisions that you're making. And you're going to choose things that bring the happiness factor as a byproduct. So instead of chasing the happiness itself, you're already choosing and doing things that are using, that are creating happiness as a byproduct. Mm -hmm. Yes, agreed. Um, so you have your own book, but what, what's the best book that you've read besides your own? Uh, and what's the number one thing you learned from it? Just one. I'm really a book nerd. I hate reading too. I used to cliff notes everything in high school and now I'm like Amazon prime book, new book, new book. Uh, the one that I'm reading right now is actually story, uh, story brand. I have oh yeah. It. Yeah. Good story brand. Book. Yep. Good book. I, I have I, it up here. I'm, I'm looking at my browser because I have the story yeah. board uh, thing up there because I'm very visual. I'm reading that right now. Uh, another great book that I was recently reading is, uh, the art of nonconform, the art of nonconformity, and okay. uh, the other one is unfuck yourself. Got it. That was another okay. by Mark Mason. Mason, I'm misquoting now, so I'll, oh, okay. I'll, I'll no, end no, it. There, but it's an orange <laughs> book cover. Oh, the subtle art, <laughs> the subtle art of not giving a fuck. I think that one too. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Got That's it. another good one. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't. Fucks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If that's fucking the title, it's good. <laughs> uh, um, no, I haven't read that one yet, though, but I did. I, I listen. I'm like an audio person. Mm. So I do audio books like crazy and uh, story brand uh, really good. And because uh, you're on like their platform, right? Is that what you mean? Like, that's what I, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Um, so, so next one is what's your favorite quote and why? Uh, it's, it's kind of my own recently that I've been living, um, choice will set you free. Hmm. Okay. And why tell a little more about that? <laughs> <laughs> the power of choice. And it goes back to what I was saying before yeah, earlier, yeah. the power of choice can really 
uh, create a freedom and responsibility, mm-hmm. but freedom to create the life that we want. So again, any, any situation you can choose what your at least one or two decisions in which direction or path that you want to take. Mm. And it's that responsibility that you're making that choice that will create the freedom. Cause many of us are looking to get unstuck or we're looking to get out of a problem or something. We're all working on something at some point, mm-hmm. 99% of us. So how do we get from stuck to unstuck? And I am a true believer that it's the power of choice to set you free. Mm-hmm. I love it. Um, well, so thank you for, for coming on. I really do appreciate it. The, the last one I got for you, where can our listeners uh, find your book? And then what's like the best place for them to connect with you online? Perfect. Uh, connect with me at Live Free Warrior on Instagram and YouTube where I upload videos weekly. Uh, you, of course, can always check out any previous content that I've posted at livefreewarrior.com. That's where you can also contact me, livefreewarrior at gmail.com. That's a lot of Live Free Warrior. And if you want to grab the book, you can, of course, grab it from the shop page on my website. Once again, livefreewarrior.com or, of course, on Amazon. Just look up Living Cancer Free, ebook and paperback. Perfect. Thank you again for coming Thank on. Thank you, Tyler.